Right, okay. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come here and uh, share with you the story of um, what we do uh, in Parliament with our data. And we thought we we're going to be um, slightly cheeky and use this um, gathering as an opportunity to gather some intelligence. So we've seen some amazing stories from people telling you what they're doing with their data and their data and, and sort of showing the value that that data has. And we would like to ask you a question. Um, and that question, I'll come to the question, who are we? So uh, we were going to have our head of strategy um, on stage with us, Tracy Green, but we were told we can only be two. So it's myself, Margaret Hardy, and um, Zaid Hadi. <sighs> data and parliament. We have a lot of data in parliament. But the question that we have is, is it of any use? Does it have any value? Can it do anything for you, me, any one of us, and the democracy? Um, many people out there have a lot of um, views about parliament, government, data in parliament, and what that data can do. Um, but before you answer, let's ask some men in wigs. They should know. They, they always know. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll ask, what do men in wigs have to do with parliamentary data? Um, well, um, something happened in 1771. Um, does anyone know this man? Um, Brass Crosby, basically. And there is a sort of saying that goes bold as brass. And where it comes from is that this man, Brass Crosby, basically, um, was a man who first um, understood, really, um, the value of um, parliamentary debates and um, sort of making them public. So there was a printer, um, a, a, a man who uh, ran the printing um, sort of press, um, called Miller. And he was brought before Bros Crosby, who was um, a mayor of uh, the city of London, uh, to be punished for publishing parliamentary debates. And Crosby did something very interesting. Instead of punishing him, he actually um, supported him, for which he was summoned um, in front of the House of Commons and basically put into the tower. Because at the time, in the 18th century, um, parliamentary debates were not opened. Um, but Crosby was supported by the people. There was a, there was a popular movement which basically um, meant that he was released and parliamentary debates were published and they were called Hansard. Why were they called Hansard? Well, there was this man, Thomas Curson Hansard, who was also a printer, interestingly. And um, in the 19th century, he basically um, started publishing parliamentary debates on a, on, on a regular basis. And hence, we've got um, Hansard as the name of, of the official parliamentary record. But I would very much like to root for the little man, Miller. Let's not forget the printer, because to me, he is the real folk hero of, you know, of, 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 of this story. So what does that story tell us? It tells us that long before us, people knew the value of parliamentary data. But do we? Do we know that value in parliament? So myself and my colleagues, do we as a society know that value? I don't know. We would like to find out what that value is to, to the society. And this is the question that we would like to put to you, to this gathering and to the, to, to the people out there to help us to help us ascertain the value of parliamentary data, to help us release that data, um, for which we um, sort of have the data strategy. So parliamentary data strategy, what is it? If it were only that simple. Well, we thought about it long and hard in 2012. And the, big, the, 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 the sort of open data was a big theme of, of, of our thinking. We thought it was very important that we understand the, the, what data we have actually in Parliament, because we have loads of it. Not, not all of it is, is, is relevant to, to the society. Some of it is just relevant to running that big yellow building and, and, and all the activity around it. What is the value of that data? How we can create that data as 
products as data sets that can be used by, um, by the public and how we can create platforms that will allow us to serve that data to everybody who needs it and how we can manage that data well, how we can manage in a, in a way that has purpose, sort of integrity and right governance around it. So we created a um, parliamentary open data platform, data.parliament, which we are here basically to tell you about and, and get your views on, if possible. So please talk to myself and, 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 and Zed and some of the colleagues, because uh, some of the guys um, who actually worked on, on the project are here and they're wearing data.parliament t-shirts. So do, do check them out, do, 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 do speak to them. Um, so we had an idea, and it's a rather complicated diagram, which is basically the original architecture um, put forward by N Nicholas Gold, who is no longer with us, but very talented architect. And we were very keen that um, our data platform is not just a data dump, because you know, data dumps are places where data goes to die. We want our data to live. We want our data to be relevant to, to the society. So from that original idea, came the realization, which is parliamentary data platform, now in its second, third, fourth iteration, beta, basically. And yes, how was it done? Well, it took some doing. We did it with our superhero development team. We did it with agile development methodology. We did it with sprints and daily stand-ups. We did it with trying to be innovative and, and sort of not follow the established routes, but also making sure that we select the right tools for the job, the tools that open data community uses, like uh, Seekan Catalog and, and um, ELDA open, open, open data um, um, endpoints. We were very dedicated in how we um, sort of, you know, coded, and basically we couldn't have done it without support from um, our management. So we had a lot of people who wished us well in Parliament and who basically you know, made sure that that journey was a success. And we had also a lot of friends out there from development, hackathon communities who gave us lots of um, good pointers and good feedback. Some of it was quite critical and that's fine. Um, you know, we, we, we felt a little bit bruised at the beginning, but it was very, very useful. And we hope that it made our platform much better and much stronger. So we have the open data platform now. Um, what next? What do we do with it? And, and that's why we're here. That's why we're engaging with the open data community. We need help from people who care about open data. We need help from experts to help us find its true value, make it better, more relevant to the society and to all of us. And I would like to now hand over to Zed to um, basically um, show us how we can all be data scientists and find value and make parliamentary data part of our everyday life. Okay, thank you. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if you're expecting Keanu Reeves, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so this is Data of Parliament. Um, gave this presentation to um, our internal users within uh, House Commons and uh, uh, the House of Lords and this is how we describe to them lots of data going into a machine and it brings it out into a single format for um, reuse basically. People can take that data and then reuse it in various applications and then open to the public as well through APIs. Um, just a quick recap. Okay, so um, technically this is what we do. We're basically taking all this data from a myriad of applications. We've got about, I don't know, 25 to 50 applications. We haven't counted, actually. Um, applications that are out there that are used by business units within par Parliament itself. And a lot of these are legacy applications, and some are quite new. Some have uh, open APIs already. Some, some are very closed systems, and it's very difficult to get that data. But we go through each database, through each application, and we extract the data from it. We push it into our, into our database. We then take that stuff and then put it into our own triple store, link it all up together, and, gener and generate some um, uh, API endpoints and some generic atom feeds. If you go to date.parliament today, this is what you'll see. Um, just quickly here, 
Um, I'll just show you what we do. Uh, this is data parliament. We've got basically data sets. We use the CCAN catalog, um, which many of you use on uh, gov.uk, the same kind of technology, it's open source. Um, we have lots of data sets. Um, we then have uh, various ways to get into data sets, um, um, either through search, through APIs. Um, here we have basically APIs pertaining to questions and answers that are put forward in the House of Commons. Uh, MPs have the right to actually question government departments. And from this data, we, we uh, created APIs. Um, this is basically for developers that can actually uh, log on to data.parliament and get APIs uh, for data. So we created uh, a documentation and instructions on how to get this data um, in an open way. Um, but then we've done all this, we've got all the data out there, uh, but then what do people do with it? So I'm gonna give you two examples of what we've done. Um, the first example is uh, petitions. So if you go to petitions.parliament.uk today, you as an individual can create a petition to petition parliament on an issue that you're strongly interested in, you want some action on. Um, this data is actually open. Um, and you'll see here, we took that data into data.parliament and then created an application for uh, the petitions committee to be able to see data um, mapped by constituency by their MP and where these petitions are actually of interest. So people in those constituencies are actually signing up um, for issues that interest them. A member of parliament and the petitions committee can actually go to, to, to this thing and view um, uh, the, their, their actual um, uh, issues of interest in their own constituencies. We also then took this one step further and uh, we created trends. So over time, what issues in various constituencies are becoming important to uh, the, those people who are signing up. Um, and we also then, per constituency, uh, created uh, also uh, a map of, of, uh, of, of subjects by interest by constituency. Again, all this stuff is open um, and available for developers and the public to actually get and download and actually mod, um, uh, play with themselves. Another one is this application, Peer Oracle. Um, now, you always wondered what, what on earth do lords do? Um, well, this actually tells you. Um, we, we uh, uh, the uh, Parliamentary Library has got a team of experts that actually apply taxonomy, a subject matter indexing on all content that comes out of the lords and of the commons. And they asked us, can we tell them what have uh, the Lords been uh, speaking about, voting on, taking part in debates, what kind of things they've been um, doing. And then we created this visualization from data within data.parliament. Um, so again, this is all open data, all available as APIs or downloadable through, through CSVs. And what we found out that during the last five years, crime, civil law, justice and rights was the most uh, talked about topic in the House of Lords. We then basically said, okay, so but if that's everything, how about if we kind of drill down to it? So um, we used D3, we used the nice little, uh, uh, we, we, um, we visualized the, the, the stuff, and we came to the fact that, you know, we can go down to the actual uh, subjects within each uh, uh, topic. So what I'm showing here is EU law and treaties, so that's part of that big topic. Um, and then we can actually drill down to the actual Lord who took part in or voted on about the topic as well. So again, this data is available there. And what you're seeing here is data from data.parliament itself, and it's Lord Ahmed talking about EU treaties. Um, so you can see how we've, we've uh, managed to take our open data and, and create a tool that, is, that, that Lords can, act, um, sorry, that the, um, uh, the library, members of parliament, peers can actually use, and the public can actually use to see what, what's happening in Parliament. Um, that's, okay. um, so these are just two very, very quick examples of, of um, applications that we created internally um, from our own uh, APIs to aid uh, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Uh, but ob obviously, as Margaret said, um, we want to engage the wider community so they develop their own applications, their own interpretation of this data. I met a gentleman just earlier to say, is journalism required with open data? And I say, yes. Um, there's a lot of context here um, that is missing. 
you, you know. Um, so I think that's where a, a, a challenge exists in, in that space. Does anybody want to? Uh... Thank you, Zaid and Margaret, if you'd like to give them a round of applause. And we probably have time for one really quick question. So, have any questions? Okay. Um, Can we have a question? Yeah, if you, if you want to <laughs> ask your own question, Margaret. Okay, so, so coming back to the beginning of the presentation, our question basically is about the value of parliamentary data. So if nobody has any questions to ask, um, does anybody feel like answering a question that we have put to you? Has anybody got any view about what should we be doing? What should we be focusing on as a, as a sort of parliamentary data team? What sort of data uh, should we be um, putting out there as open data? And how should we go about it to make it more relevant and more useful for you guys to do good stuff with? Any views? Maybe something you could have a, a think about and perhaps discuss. Oh, no, no, we do have, we do have a question. Yeah. Sorry. Do we have a microphone? If not, I've got one. Where's the question? Hi, um, it's uh, Paul from BBC. Um, just thinking about, are you doing any work around um, user needs and kind of audience research? And you've got loads of really, really great data. But to me, it feels like the way to focus on how it would be useful is to really look at you know, what are the questions people want to know from Parliament. Um, and also, uh, kind of combining this with the audience-facing, public-facing website. So it's not just a kind of technical thing which sits on the side, but it becomes that core mass audience proposition as well. Um, so yeah, I, I'm interested to know if there's any kind of work around similar to, I guess, GDS has been doing user needs, audience research, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. That's, that's an excellent question. And, and actually, with the creation of parliamentary digital service and the whole drive in parliament to, towards digital strategy and becoming more digital, um, it's very important for us actually to engage with the public and understand what the public and our other sort of user communities, like members, even, even internal um, users, actually want from, from the data. So. It's an excellent question and an excellent suggestion as well. We need to do more of that work. We have done some um, through various blogs and through uh, parliamentary events, inviting colleagues from um, development communities and from user communities. But we definitely need to do more of this. We need to um, sort of get more user um, research people. We need to create more uh, public-facing engagement opportunities. We need to come to more events like that to speak to people like yourselves to find out exactly what it is that we should be doing. And please engage with us. So we have the blog. We have channels for, for, for engagement. Please let us know what it is that we, that we need to do, because that's where the value is in that continuing conversation. Thank you very much for Thank this Thank you, Margaret. Thanks.